Hello and welcome. This is Nicole Smith. I work at the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center. I help tribes collect and use data to create healthier, happier communities. This short video is on using health data to create policy or to inform your political advocacy. And it's part of a series that we developed to help you find and use health data. To see the rest of the videos, click the link below. All right, let's go. We all know that having good health data is important. Like other nations, tribal leaders and staff need reliable information to inform their strategic planning, create useful policies and programs, and support their political advocacy. One of the wonderful things about health data is that it can help us tell powerful stories. When it comes to policy and political advocacy, health data helps us describe both the challenges and the good things we see. For example, health data can help us describe the magnitude, or how big, a health challenge is in our community. For instance, how many people in this community are impacted by diabetes. It can also help us describe the magnitude of a protective factor, or something that has been shown to protect or enhance our health. For instance, how many people in this community are strongly connected to their culture. Health data can also help us tell the story of how a challenge or protective factor started and has changed over time. This can give everyone involved an idea of when a particular health challenge or protective factor started and whether it is improving or getting worse. Health data can also help us tell the story of how our experience of a particular health challenge or protective factor is compared to other populations. If you want to learn more about interpreting health data so you can share powerful stories with your community members and leadership, check out this video on the topic. Once important decision makers have a good grasp of a situation, for example, by understanding the magnitude of the situation, how it started and has changed over time, and how our community's experience compares to others, it's only natural to move into problem-solving mode. Once this happens, you'll see people ask questions like, what can be done? If we do nothing about it, what are the consequences? If we choose to act, what's the best course of action? What evidence is there that our proposed solution works? What other communities have implemented similar models and what were the results? And if our solution is successful, what impacts will that have? And how can we measure the impacts? If you're interested in using health data to create policies and support political advocacy in your community, walking with community members and your leadership through this entire process is useful, starting with telling a story using data, inspiring problem solving, presenting potential solutions, and sharing ways of measuring impacts. The Native Children Always Ride Safe Study Native Cars is an example of a program that used data to create policy change. The goal of the project was to increase the proportion of children riding adequately restrained in motor vehicles in six Northwest tribal communities. To understand the magnitude of the health challenge, in this case, kids not being properly restrained in cars, the project collected data by observing how kids were riding in motor vehicles and briefly interviewing the vehicle driver. We found that for all participating tribal communities together, 29% of children were riding unrestrained. Only 49% of children were adequately restrained. Adequate restraint varied by community from 24% in one tribe to as high as 70% in another. The data helped project staff understand things that helped people properly restrain child passengers like driving younger children, being the parent or guardian of the kids in the car, and driving in an area with a seatbelt law. The data collected also identified things that prevented people from properly restraining kids, like driving close to home, picking kids up unexpectedly, or believing a child was too big for a child safety seat when they were actually too small for a regular seatbelt to fit well. To help community leadership understand the issue, 
we described what we observed and learned. Specifically, we presented each community's data story to tribal councils or business councils and to key individuals within each community who could have an impact on changing behaviors, like maternal child health clinicians, WIC, Head Start program staff, and community health workers. We also held multiple focus groups at each community. During these focus groups, we shared what we observed and learned. Then we provided space for community members to discuss the data story that we just shared. We did this to share the data story with community members, but we also wanted to learn if we were telling the data story correctly. And we also wanted to better understand the community's strengths and values. We also used the focus group space to brainstorm ways to increase child safety seat use and to ask community members for their feedback on ideas to address child safety. So after sharing the data story with community members and leadership, Communities proposed to develop tailored interventions. These were different for each community. All involved community-specific media campaigns with messages based on local data, created and delivered by local people. All tribes planned to train and employ child passenger safety technicians, individuals who would reach out to community members and help them select, install, and use child safety seats that fit each child and vehicle. Tribes also learned from each other about what was already working to keep kids safe in cars. For example, Native Cars tribes with a child safety seat law had a higher proportion of properly restrained kids, 70%, compared to those with no law, 36%. Knowing this, some tribes proposed to implement policy solutions in their communities. Project staff anticipated, at least we really hoped, that the community interventions would result in fewer children riding unrestrained and more children riding adequately restrained. And the reason we really hoped for that was because all participating communities were so highly invested. They really took the lead in collecting data and in designing, implementing, and evaluating their interventions that were designed based on their own community data. Native CAR staff at the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board were there to support efforts when needed by helping develop specific activity plans, timelines, evaluation measures, and finding and hiring professionals like photographers, videographers, graphic designers to make media. We organized trainings for child passenger safety technicians. We helped draft policies. We facilitated time and space for those leading the work at each tribe to come together and learn from each other's experiences. After two years of planning and implementing interventions, Native CARS staff measured the impact of the interventions using a second round of vehicle observations and interviews. By repeating the same technique two years later, we could evaluate whether the percentage of adequately restrained kids increased, decreased, or stayed the same. In tribes that were interested in policy change, data were also collected regarding community support for a tribal seatbelt law. The data we collected showed that the interventions resulted in significant reductions in the percent of children riding unrestrained from 29% to only 14% combined. They also saw an increase in proper restraint or adequate restraint use from 49% to 60%. As you can see from this graphic, most five out of the six tribes saw an increase in the percent of adequately restrained kids post-intervention. Our Native CARS team also looked at shifts in community members' beliefs about how to safely transport children. Before interventions, 43% of people driving kids felt kids ages seven and younger did not need child safety seats. After interventions, only 26% thought children seven and younger did not need child safety seats. Native CARS trained 22 tribal child passenger safety technicians who held 46 car seat check events, 71 education classes, and distributed 904 child safety seats to families in need. Today, many of these techs are still actively serving their communities long after the official Native CARS interventions were completed. In terms of policy changes, 
one tribe enacted a tribal child safety seat law, one tribe updated its law to align with expert child safety seat recommendations. Other tribes adopted organization level policies around child safety seat use. For example, in one community, the Head Start program implemented a policy that children must arrive in a child safety seat, a rule that is enforced by one of the teachers who greets kids as they arrive to school. As we've discussed, using health data to change policy isn't just about telling a data story. It also requires inspiring problem solving among community members and leadership and presenting and testing potential solutions. The specific nuts and bolts of developing a policy is different for each community. For many communities, policy change requires understanding your community members' beliefs, attitudes, and readiness around a potential policy change. You'll need to build community awareness and buy-in around the issue. You'll need to draft potential policies with tribal attorneys. You'll need to propose the policies to tribal council, participate in public hearings, and then campaign to inform community members about the policy you're proposing. Also, policy change often requires a champion, someone who builds a team to support the work. Changing a policy at times can be a long process that takes years. It's helpful to have a team of folks committed to the cause. You will also need to consider how the policy will be enforced. In the case of a child safety seat law, Native CARS tribes developed a training for police officers to recognize misuse of child safety seats. They decided on a fee schedule for citations, they created a diversion program where first-time offenders could receive education from a child passenger safety technician. As a reminder, the same data that led you to change a policy can also be used to evaluate the effects of a policy over time. That is the beauty of using data to design our work. We have built-in evaluation measures in the example of native cars, tribes repeated the vehicle observations to see did child safety seat use increase, decrease, or stay the same after enacting a tribal child passenger safety law. If it increased, the policy was probably effective. If it decreased or stayed the same, then the tribes knew they needed to focus on something else, awareness, maybe enforcement of the law, but either way, the evaluation data gives direction to the work. Through this process, the Native CARS team created a free online tool called the Native CARS Atlas. It guides tribal communities through the same steps discussed here. It includes a module to help you develop laws, strengthen existing laws, and work with police officers to enforce child passenger restraint laws in your community. For example, on the Native Cars Atlas at nativecars.org, you can access guidance written by tribal members who successfully enacted child safety seat laws in their communities. Especially useful are the tips for forming an advocacy committee, researching how your tribe or community changes the law and order codes, and preparing for the public comment period. The data component is very important during this time as building consensus is often facilitated by sharing community-specific data in support of a law. To access the Native Cars Atlas, please visit www.nativecars.org. And if you have any questions, contact Native Cars at mpaihb.org. Do you have questions about using health data to create policies and support your political advocacy? Don't know where to start? Consider connecting with the Northwest Tribal Epidemiology Center or the tech that serves your region. Techs are a great resource when it comes to health data and can help you with obtaining data, collecting your own data, and analyzing and interpreting data. They can also help you translate your data into action through creating strategic plans, developing data-driven policies, and creating effective presentations and reports. You can learn more about techs at tribalepicenters.org. If you are a member of a Pacific Northwest tribe and you need data services, contact the Northwest Tech. Our email is npaihb 
at npaihb.org. And if you're outside the Pacific Northwest, visit the Tribal Epicenter's website, and it'll have the contact information for the tech director for your region. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, listen. And if you want to see the next video in the series, it's on effectively presenting health data, you can click the link below. Thanks.